it is a bumpy road. It is a Saturday, and I decided to spend the day with my friend Danny cutting um, cutting an oak tree, milling it. Uh, if you saw a previous video, the mesquite video, uh, he, I, I cut it with him as well, and, and his son-in-law. Today uh, will hopefully be the last day of cutting up uh, not one, but two giant oak trees. So join me as we uh, go mill it up into, um, I'll be out here, um, into uh, four by fours, oh, or slightly bigger. Uh, we're in uh, Sonoida, which is southeast of Tucson by about an hour. Oh, it's a bad road. Let's cut. I first want to point out that chainsaw milling a tree without a chainsaw mill is hard. However, I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on a on a chainsaw that can handle a 36 inch bar, uh, and another 500 bucks for a chainsaw mill. Um, so I, I, I do what I can. The method I'm the method I uh, use to cut up a or to slab this tree is I make a, a horizontal cut as parallel to the log as I can. I make a series on each side and then I connect the two in the middle. Right now I'm just marking out my grid system to do uh, either four by fours or something uh, similar in size, maybe like four by six. I figure uh, four by six would be good. I marked out, uh, I believe it was uh, four inch lines to either side, uh, two lines to either side, so we'll be making a total of five cuts that will yield uh, four slabs, well six if you count the, the ones on the end, um, but other than that, the process is really kind of boring to watch. It's interesting to, to do because you have to focus on exactly what you're cutting, where you're cutting, and you know, every bit is just paying attention. Um, I, I, I was at this for about uh, five hours. We took an hour lunch break. We worked about six hours. Um, and uh, cutting um, cutting parallel to the grain is easiest for the saw. It just cuts nice long strips and it, it uh, goes really well, really quickly compared to cross, uh, cutting cross the grain, which most chainsaw mills will do. Um, with cutting cross grain, it, it, um, it just, it, it's hard for the saw. It takes out dust instead of shavings. Uh, okay, uh, I have all my five cuts done and you see how, mon how many, uh, how much shavings it makes. Quite a bit, so I have to clear it consist or, um, constantly. Uh, after ma I make those four cuts as deep as it goes, my chainsaw has a 24-inch bar, uh, so and the log is four and a half feet. Um, so I have to connect it. I will be. Um, I take a break just to sharpen it with uh, my Granberg Granberg uh, chainsaw chain sharpener. It works really well. It just takes a little bit of practice to get go to get good at it, and then you can sharpen your chain in just uh, maybe five minutes, and it's it is deadly sharp. I've cut myself handling it, moving the chain, uh, so that's why I use gloves. Yeah, I cut my finger with the, the uh, freshly sharpened teeth. It's, it, it's it's a nice little unit. You hook it up to your car battery, and it's just you, know, you can do it on on the, on the job. Over here, I am just uh, finishing up my the cut on the other side. Pretty boring. Like nobody wants to see that. And I and I start to work on connecting those two cuts. I cut down in the middle as far as I can. Um, uh, usually, it's about half the log, and 
after I do both sides as far down as I can and the middle about halfway down, that's when we flip it over and we'll start to, um, I'll, I will start to connect the cuts on the other side and keeping it vertical is, is so important. Uh, you'll see in a second after we flip the log that uh, we shim it with some, just some chunks of wood uh, so I get it as parallel or as, me, as vertical as possible. Because um, if not, your, your your cuts will be screwed up, and then you'll waste some log, and it, it's just a whole mess, and you know, time wasted. Uh, Danny let me use his, his still to cut off a, a nub. I'm still I'm I'm a husky guy, honestly. I grew up with it, and it it's what a it's it's just nostalgic for me. The sound, honestly. Flipping that log was hard. It was probably about. I want to say maybe 3,000 pounds. Uh, it was it was heavy. Each slab is about 200 pounds at least, 300 pounds maybe. Um, I, I I'm just now connecting the cuts on the other side by just going up, being careful not to let the saw emerge out of the cut, because if it did, it would want to kick back towards me, and kick back is dangerous. Um, I'm sure you know that. How you, that's where most accidents happen, uh, and I'm just connecting the cuts, nice and uh, nice and rhythmically. Honestly, just the whole day was cutting. <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, after I cut each side, I go to the top, and I I have to I eyeball it. I don't use chalk line or long straight edge. I I eyeball the cuts. I'm pretty good at it. So after I connect the cuts in the middle. I'm ready to start splitting it. We got a big sledge and a little, uh, little hammer to start the um, wedges. Danny, who is in his late 70s, is almost as strong as I am. He's, he's a retired firefighter for the U.S. Forest Service, and he's just, he's the coolest old guy you'll meet. He's, he's super cool. Um, the first, uh, you'd call it a butt end, because it wasn't the actual slab, it was part of the live edge. It was having a hard time coming off, so I grabbed a saw and cut in the middle with the wedges still in the end, I believe, just making sure not to hit the uh, the wedges. And there goes our first slab. Uh, I, I I did end up taking those pieces with the live edge, or those um those butt pieces. I guess you'd call it if this was a loaf of bread. <laughs> um, he uh he was just kind of messing around with part of it. There's a big knot in it, so it kind of screwed up part of the cut. So he's just wedging it out while I uh, connect the two uh, next cuts. And we put some wedges in it just because it helps to see where I need to cut on the inside. And being very careful not to let it kick back or jerk because then it'll hit the wedges and that will ruin uh, the chain. Or you know, really set back. Uh, or really make, you know, make a lot of work for sharpening it. And the slab almost the slabs make a very pleasing sound uh, I must say uh, just the sound of wood cracking is, is, is it's a good sound to me um, and there you go slab number I guess two if you count the first one uh, out of the first two or three were the hard ones for some reason the, the cuts in the middle didn't connect fully after that, they, uh, they went much smoother. I just had to do a little bit more cutting in the middle. Not, not a crazy amount. Um, however, the whole day, you know, I, I edited four hours of cutting down to probably about 15 minutes. Um, so you're just getting the good parts. Most of them were, uh, most of it was just cutting. Um, slab number three. Uh, again, it just went faster. I'm making some kind of hand gestures. I guess that means hit the wedge in more. <laughs> I, I had a good time that day. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was tiring though. Goodness, it was hard. It was hot too. And there was that ever so pleasing crack in the wood where it separates finally. The wedges will help to separate it, so it you'll, the, which um, allows for it to pop out when it's ready. Um, and last cut I let Danny um, 
do the cutting while I manage the wedges. Just a lot of it's it, it's hard to, to to cut precisely with the chainsaw, especially where you where you can't really see it cutting. Uh, I, I I've done it quite a bit, so I I've gotten better at it. Still, I would it'd be nice to have a chainsaw mill, that 36 inch bar at least, maybe 40 inch. I don't know. Uh, I can dream. And there's our last slab. Four inches thick, about 32 inches wide. At this point, I already have lots of slabs from the other tree. I need uh, boards now. So I'm cutting them all into about six to eight inch boards. Um, just with the chainsaw. Um, sh you know, short work, really. You, I, mean, I, I can see where it's cutting, so it's easier. <laughs> Each weighed about, I'd say, 100 pounds to 100. I'd say 110 pounds. About. They're, they were heavy pieces. Oak is it's not a light wood. It's dense and this is full of water. I, I, I paint the ends later. But it's, it's, it's heavy still. Seems about right. And I'll let Danny cut his while I um, managed that first butt uh, slab. I just cut some of the knots off and made it a uniform thickness. Uh, whereas there is a, whereas previously there were um, bulges here and there, so I just kind of cut it all, cut it to about four inches thick. So we just left, or I just, I just left, excuse me. I just left uh, Danny's with a truck, uh, truck bed full of oak. Um, I also picked up quite a bit of dirt, so that's why my face is dirty. Uh, it's now three o'clock. I, I, uh, we, we started at about uh, eight thirty. Oh. So, um, I'm on my way back to Tucson, where we're gonna cut the ends off these, where it's checked a little bit, cut of the of the boards, and we're gonna paint the ends with uh, latex paint, which will prevent them from cracking more than they already are. Although. So, back in Tucson, see ya. I'm painting all the wood right now. This is um, six of the nine pieces. I'm painting with a uh, red paint. It doesn't matter the color. Oops. Just as long as it's, uh, where does it say? Where does it say? All right, here we go. Latex paint. So latex is, um, latex is uh, warm, uh, pretty waterproof. So I'm just going to continue painting these and then stack them. I had gotten rid of a lot of uh, firewood and that's how I made room for uh, these uh, these big billets. Uh, it's right next to my big wood pile. As you can see, I'm getting rid of a lot of wood slowly, filling a lot of it. Um, I was originally going to keep a lot of the firewood for blacksmithing, but I already have plenty of ironwood, so I throw all the lighter stuff away. Uh, like, uh, you know, acacia, uh, carob, uh, pines, whatnot. Here I'm just cutting off the ends. I just cut as far as I see the 
crack go, usually about two or three inches, and the billet will want to move a little bit, so I kind of just let, I, I don't force it, I just let the saw take itself down. After that, I take my paint out and I put a nice liberal coat of it all over. Um, nice red complaints, pulling it out. <coughs> exact. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know what's up with that strap in the frame. That was weird. Nice little first person view of what the slab sees, or what the billet sees. Nice watching guys.